Bilbo Blaggins viewers, subscribers to his awesome YouTube channel. We're so blessed for you to tune in tonight. You're going to be touched and anointed and blessed and highly flavored of the Lord. I'm touched and highly flavored. Okay. Okay. Set this down here. All right, does everybody got a piece of paper? Oh, yes. That was pretty smart this time, right? Well, I made that much easier on us all. Hey, I appreciate you letting me continue to uh, talk to you. It's been a lot of fun for me. Um, by way of review, I will say this. If you need the lessons one and two, I have them over here. In your hand, you hold lesson number three, front and back. Okay? That was so simple, man. Prophetic assignment, we call it your DNA. Your divine, natural assignment. Because a lot of divine, a lot of natural. Okay? What we'll try to do is bring the natural part of it into play so we don't get confused and miss it, right? I mean, the biggest worry most of us have is missing it somehow. Look, somebody said, God's too big to miss. Man, you should put that on your little notepad somewhere. God is too big to miss. You need not worry about that. If you want to find him, he will run right into you. He will run right over you. You will bump into him. It's not right. Okay? So, if we talk about our prophetic, prophetic means something said ahead of time. It can be we prophesy, and if we look it up, Naba, I think, something like that in the Hebrew, it means to speak predictively, and that's what everybody thinks of when they think prophesy. I'm going to predict, I'm going to call something that everybody else doesn't know about, but to predictively speak, or speaking in normal discourse. And everybody said, I like that one too. Like that. So we prophesy. Mm. Most good words are given to you and you don't even know they hit you. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of wisdom that flies through people's words and is just talking. And if we could allow ourselves to be prophesied to more often, ooh, I might run on that one. You can allow yourself to be prophesied to more often than, than you think. It doesn't take a special event, a special moment, a special anointing. You can find it in there about any time you want to. All right? So, here we go. Prophetic, we talk about the word assignment. We've, we've determined it's what now? You're either a solution to a problem or somebody's reward. Okay? And so, we're going to try to go and demystify just a little bit. We're going to press forward some. So here we go. We'll give you five keys to finding your son, okay? And I think this will help you. Um, first thing I want to say is, your assignment is less your decision and more your discovery. God knows what he thinks about you. God already has plans and purposes and has designed you. Now, I'm not sure if we were together with God before we showed up in a body. Might have been. We might have had a discussion with you. You may have agreed to come to the family you came to and have the kids you have and live in the town that you live in before you ever got here. Wow. You may have looked at that whole picture and said, yeah, I'll do that. I'm good, send me. And he says, all right, we're gonna schedule you for September 14th, 1957. And I thought, good, it's great. I'll just wait here until time. Until the fullness of time was come. That's what Jesus did. Wow. He just waited. He just waited until it was time. The Bible said he had already discussed with the pre mm, this is a good one, predetermined counsel of God. I mean, you can look it up in the Bible. It's actually there. They actually talked <laughs> and said, what's the plan? They said, well, the plan is you're going to manifest in the earth. And you're going to deliver people from their sins. And you're going to turn this thing upside down. And you're going to redeem everybody. And, uh, and it's, going to, it's, going to be a, it's going to be awesome. And we'll probably, you know, blow trumpets, have angels show up. We'll announce you. It'll be nice. I promise. The backside of it is going to be a little weird. It'll be a little hard. But I promise you, 
We'll come get you, pull you out of the grave, and uh, it's going to be awesome. All the other people raised from the dead at the same time you do. How about 500? Great. That would be awesome. <laughs> Will they walk around Jerusalem? Yeah. We'll let them see them. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. All that actually happened. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Because yeah. the Bible says Jesus knew from the beginning he was slain from the foundation of the world. Oh, oh. He already knew what was going down. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if you were there before you showed up. And you said, so... Man, you ought to just lift two hands right now and say, Lord, I thank you for where I am. I thank you for the family I'm in. Thank you for my town. Thank you for my talents. Thank you for this body. It's the one I've got. Amen. Yeah, you, you agreed to it. All you have to do is take care of it now that you got it. All right. So. Your assignment's your discovery, not your decision. So I'm willing to postulate with you that it's already tucked in your inner man. There will, there will have to be witnesses. As you, does, that, does that make any sense? A witness. You ever got a witness to something? That's a nice religious term that means something on the inside of me said yes and said, I feel God on that statement. And I get a witness. Can get a witness up in here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We a lot of times stumble into things, and all of a sudden something will happen on the inside. We go, hmm, "I feel God in that." We should, uh, if we did anything, we should begin to hone our ability and our desire to get a witness, to see God in more things than than we do, because He's constantly speaking. The Bible says, "If I." He said, how precious are thy words to me, O Lord. They are more in number than the sand. If I should, if I should, uh, when I awake, I'm still with thee. So it, he says the words that he speaks, they're, they're more than the sand of the ocean. The ocean and the, you know, the whole deal. A lot of words. He's thinking about you always. So you'd be surprised how easy it is to hear something that God's saying to you. So you can come alive. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Hmm. The, 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 I guess the hard part is the first Corinthians deal. First Corinthians uh, 2, 7 through 12. I, everybody's eyes not seen, ears not heard, nor is it enter into the heart of man what God has for those. Everybody ever heard that? Yeah. Eyes not seen, ears not heard. Hmm. Nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has for those who, who uh, yeah. But the next line is the good one. But God hath revealed them unto us by the Spirit. Boy, don't get stuck on the, you ain't, nobody don't know nothing about it. That's not true. <laughs> if you want to know, you can know. Because God hath revealed to them those things which he has in his heart for us by his Spirit. What's that spirit again? That's the breath. That's the ruach. That's the pneuma. That's the Hebrew and Greek. You like that? Boom. <laughs> those, are, those are simple words for breath, wind, air. Uh, and that's why we, we see the spirit is breathing in us. And he's saying, if you just want to say some stuff, you could. He says, these things are revealed to us by the spirit. The spirit or the breath of God searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God. Who knows the spirit of man except the spirit of man that's in him? And who knows the mind of God? Remember all that stuff? All that to say God is trying to get us in sync with what we know to be true about what he has for us and what he wants us to be so that we can say the same thing he does. Remember we said last week we want to homo logeo. We want to say the same thing. We want to believe in our heart and confess with our mouth so that we can be saved or sozo to come into a full healthy self. Right. Yeah. You with me on that one? Yeah. And if we will say the same thing he does, we make our confession and we make everything good and firm and sure and we come into what God has for us. So, your prophetic assignment, I'm not going to belabor that, but uh, your prophetic assignment is the intention of God, not the decision of God. All right, I'm going to turn the page. This is going to be the fun part. 
God wants you to know your assignment. He wants you to discover your assignment. If you want to have fun, let's just get on a, get on track and try to find some stuff about what makes you tick. I, I will. I will. Um, mm. Yeah, I might do. I'm trying to. I think what I'll do is go through two, three, four, and five, and then come back to the to that. Okay. Okay. So here goes. This is so cool. And it makes it so clean. How many know what you're supposed to be and do? Very few of us. And, and we kind of, we're in and out of it, you know. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says we, we um, speak to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms. Y'all remember that? I think that's if, Ephesians 5, probably, 17-ish. Speaking to yourself in psalms. Psalms are, if you look up that word, what's a psalm? It means to pluck or to twine. And so psalms are playing on a stringed instrument. This is going to bless you. How many know music has a way of getting to your heart? It brings things alive on the inside. When you hear certain music, it makes you cry. Mm -hmm. When you hear other music, it makes you smile. And when you hear other music, it makes you strong. It just, all this music has something and it touches. This is really cool. I'm, I'm breaking down some words for you. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, all of those are, are kind of nuances of, of singing and words and breath coming through and uh, playing on the strings. And it says, Making melody in your heart unto the Lord. That word making melody is a kind of a spinoff on songs of plucking and twanging. It means somehow you rubbed the strings of my heart and you made them vibrate. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. And it's like somehow you, you pluck the strings on that and you make them come alive. I felt something. I heard something. I got a witness. I felt the anointing. Right, right. And that's all it is. It's the anointing. The anointing is not something God's trying to withhold. The anointing is something he's trying to pour out. He's, he's really intending to get us greased up and on the right track. Everybody with me on that? He's trying to rub us down with the oil. And he is really wanting to plug the strings of your heart. I... Um, now we just sang, I'm no longer a slave to fear. And you felt what started happening as we started feeling an anointing. Amen. Because all of us, our hearts were being rubbed and that vibration was starting to flow out and we were coming into an agreement saying that thing that God's saying and all of a sudden we began to come up and we started getting saved. Amen. Does that make any sense? We were being saved as we were singing. We were elevated in our spirit. And that's why when you, when you get in that kind of environment, you elevate. Now, God has anointed a lot of people to release anointing on you that don't even know what they're doing. Okay? I, I'm going to tell a quick story. My wife, um, I think we were... We have moved so many times and done these, you know, massive adventures in God. You know, you just go, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to uh, CBN University and get me a master's degree in education. Okay, great. And uh, <laughs> as we, is that the, was that the circumstance? Yeah. This, see, she remembers the details because she's going to that here in a minute, but... She was sitting and we were in the process of the whole thing. Donna, come just tell them right quick. You, you have to tell them that story real quick. Just, and this is the first time we realized that the Holy Spirit will sing to you concerning his will and plan for you and what problems he's forming you to solve and what rewards he has for you and who you're going to go to and bless. And we get lots of fear. Ain't nobody else going to be in the fear, but I did. But go ahead. 
I can I just, just post. I was just so worried about our finances. I didn't know how we were going to make it. When he just quit your job and up and go with three, you know, well, two kids and I was pregnant. And just, I didn't know what we were going to do. I thought, well, we'll just do what we have to do. Well, I'll, I'll get a job. I'll send Mary Kay. I'll do whatever. And, and Bill can get a job and we'll just do what we have to do. That's what we're going to do. And um, one day I was walk I dropped him off at work. It was right before he quit. And I was, and I got out and walked around town. And I kept seeing, hearing a song, and you just, have you ever just heard a song? Mm -hmm. And and you just, it's, it's like weighing down in you, and you don't even know it's there. And okay. like throughout the day, then all of a sudden, it comes to your ears, and you're actually, oh, I've been seeing that all day. Yeah. When you do that, God's trying to tell you something. Mm -hmm. And uh, it may not even be a song, it might just be a, a scripture, it could be a line, a movie, whatever. If it sticks in your mind more than a day, sometimes it takes me three days to hear it. That's really, I mean, that's just how deaf I am sometimes to the spirit. And that's kind of sad, but that's just life. But um, anyway, I was walking around town that day, and something bubbled up, and it had been down there for probably a few days, and this is the first time when it came up to my ears, and I started humming it, and saying the words, I knew right then I was hearing from God and he was prophesying to me. And uh, I think it was a Paul McCartney song, Wings. Um, what was the song, babe? Uh, the Cover Bear. Oh. I'll, still, I'll still find something there with my love. It's understood everywhere with my love. My love does it good. And he was telling me, I am your love. I'm going to do it good. When you're covered spare, I'm going to feel it. Don't you ever worry about that. The whole time you're there, never worry about it. And you know what? It, we never had to worry about it. We ended up getting a little inheritance paid for the whole year. We never had to work. So I'm just saying, the Holy Spirit put that song in me, and he'll do it for you. And if you start being sensitive to the Spirit, you'll start getting it, and you'll start getting words that you know come straight from the Spirit. Amen. You just never know where it's going to come from. But it doesn't matter if it bears a witness. If you bear a witness with that in your spirit, yeah. your spirit's going to reach out and grab it, and, and that's going to be life to you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And I said before that God is so desirous that you get it, and that you are able to feel like you're moving in the Spirit, moving along with His purpose and His plan for you. He really wants you to get it. And I said, that's why He would he fill you with the Holy Ghost and let you speak in tongues. So it bypass your mind, the whole thing. And he, he will do whatever's necessary. He will take Paul McCartney's song, and He will just bury it right in your spirit, and wait until it bubbles up, and then all of a sudden you'll start hearing it. And, you know, back... And back a long time ago, we used to really worry about secular music. That, oh my God, you know, secular music, you're going to go to hell. You're just going to go to hell. You know, start like biting and asking if you play it backwards. You don't know what to say. It's terrible. And I'm sure it was. And I'm glad I got out of it, but I'm glad I still hear it. And, and I, I remember I, I, <laughs> I was so upset when my son came home with a bare naked ladies. I, I found out he had a bare naked ladies. CD. I was like, good God, John, what have you got? This is ridiculous. <laughs> and then I listened to him, I was like, oh, they're awesome. What are they? yeah. I didn't, I didn't, that bear didn't get lucky part it hurt my head just a little bit. But I get it. That was my three days. I'm done on my bed post. I don't even know. But they, they, they said, great song. And then my face is a little bit too. <laughs> All that to say, God will use not just about anything. Just about anything. So just reach up your hands one more time and say, hey, Jesus. Hey, scrape off the goofy stuff. Off the goofy. Blow out my pipes. Out my pipe. Give me some hearing. Me some hearing. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. So eyes not seen, nor hath the ear heard, nor hath it entered into the heart of man. But God has revealed it. By his spirit. So he's breathing on us all the time. Um, there, I got that out. That's all I want to do is get that out. Listen, want you, I'm going to give you three clues to help 
discern some of what God's doing in your life. What you hate is a clue to something you're assigned to correct. I don't even have to say anymore. What you hate is a sign. Look for the signposts because they're, I mean, there's a reason he uses signs and wonders. Just a sign. Just give me some kind of sign, girl. Just give me some kind of sign, girl. He, he's got signposts out there, and this is a great one. If you hate something, you may think that's, oh, i got to quit hating. It may be exactly him rubbing and uh, causing the cords of your heart to vibrate to wake you up to something you're assigned to solve. Wow. So, and I'll, I'll just give you a few corollaries. If you, what you're unwilling to confront, you will never be able to correct. And so sometimes a certain amount of hatred of certain things, whether it's injustice, what, what is it that just makes you, hmm, well, that could be something that God is directing you to put your efforts into to solve that problem, okay? Um, <clears throat> whether it's sickness, injustice, prejudice, poverty, divorce, abortion, ignorance, an angry man is an awakened man. Focused anger can be the key to miraculous change. Everybody digging that? All right, I'm going to give you another one. What grieves you is a clue to something you're assigned to heal. Ooh. And how many can start to witness? And this is just the simple, this is how the Holy Spirit works. Now you start to witness to, that's right. I feel that. How many know something that grieves you? And when you see it, it breaks your heart. And when something breaks your heart, that's a sign that God is waking your heart strings and causing them to vibrate in sync with him and has begun to equip you and purpose you in that direction to make a difference. See, if we all got pointed in the direction of our assignment and we're free enough to move toward it, <laughs> everybody digging it? then we might be shocked at how quickly the world could be changed. I'm less, I'm less interested in everybody getting to go to heaven than I am seeing the whole world start changing. And I know that sounds kind of weird. If we had, if we had revival, what would that look like? A bunch of people get saved. If they don't get this, the best you ever do is make heaven. And the world stays the same. And another generation quits. And everybody says, hmm. I've got to know that God cannot, that can't be the plan. Just to click a generation and another generation make it heaven. If you don't get in tune with the vibration of God for your life and move toward your assignment that he and you have already agreed is going to be good for the earth, then nothing changes. So that's why I say I'm more interested in people getting up in tune and in the right vibration of their heart with God's plan for them than I am for you to get saved and make heaven. Got anybody can get to heaven. That's easy. <laughs> anybody can get to heaven. Yeah. Like God, they're saved. I, I, I give up on me and I go for you. I'll take what you got. I mean, how hard is that to make an exchange? What do you got, Bill? Nothing. What do you got? Everything. All right. I mean, I mean, how, I mean, how dumb do you have to be not to do that? Right. I mean, if you, if somebody presents that to you, what do you want? King of the universe working on your side, or you just want to make it on your own? Uh, I'll go King of the universe. I'll take door number one out. So I mean, God, what kind of nonsense do you think? Yeah, it's not hard to get saved. This is hard. 
That's why they say, I mean, Paul said, Lay aside, laying aside every sin, which is missing the mark, and wait that doth so easily beset us and run the race. What's the race? That one. The race is not to make heaven, people. The race is to make a difference. Amen. The race is to hit your assignment. Yeah. The race is to make be a solution to somebody's problem and somebody's reward. Right. That's the race. Right. Good Lord, I'm going to make heaven. Right. This poker guy was like, we're going to make heaven. I can guarantee you that. that that's going to happen. <laughs> Billy ain't going to Billy ain't going to make hell. That's just going to happen. You can put that out your mind. The question is, will I make my son? Wow. Will I lay aside every sin and every weight that trips me up and causes me to lose that focus and my heart to go quiet when I need it to be touched, plucked, twined, and I need to be singing to myself spiritual songs and songs and awakening myself. I need to be speaking to the well. We talked about the well Sunday, and I mentioned it a little bit in Numbers 21. There's a great scripture. It said he brought them to the place where he had spoken to the well and given them water. And this time, and, and remember when he said he told uh, he told Moses to go back and speak to the well. He struck it twice. The whole thing. He preached the whole crowd. I mean, they spent a lot of time in the wilderness. I mean, 40 years you're going to visit Sunday down twice. <laughs> it just happens. And where are you going? I don't know, but. I, Strange the food we've been here before. <laughs> I think I've seen that hill. Well, I ain't. We're right back there. We're rock. Right back rock thing, yeah. I remember that. He says, I tell you what, sing to the well. Sing, spring up, O well. And then it says, sing ye unto it. And so it's kind of neat. It, it's a, if you can look it up, it's 21 something, uh, somewhere in 21 uh, numbers. But it says, sing to the well. That's what we do. That's why we enjoy that right there, that little worship time. Because we start singing to our well. And our well starts coming up. And then it says, sing ye unto it is just testify. It means respond. When, when something causes your well to begin to bubble up in you, all God says is just respond accordingly. Now, that's heavier than you think. He is fairly consistently stirring the waters. Right. He is fairly consistently allowing your well to be sung to, that spring of life that's in you. The question is, do we do the second part where it says, sing ye unto it, or witness it, respond accordingly? And can we move toward that thing? So uh, <laughs> I guess for most of us, the key is, no wonder but David said, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? Yeah. He wasn't worried about going to hell either, right. trust me. He was just like, God, I'm so slow sometimes. And I just don't seem to hit it. Yeah. I don't seem to respond like I feel like I should. I feel like I'm dull and lethargic. I feel like and, and, and no wonder he says, don't take your Holy Ghost from me. Just keep plucking my strings. Keep twining. Keep plucking. Keep vibrating me on the inside. Keep causing me to see something that stirs me. Something I hate. Something that grieves me. Something I love. I, I'll give you the, one other clue. It says, uh, what you love is a key to the gifts and the skills and the wisdom you possess. Find something you love and build your agenda around it. I don't know, it just sounds so simple, doesn't it? But this is how we this is how you move in the spirit. Because being in the Holy Ghost, not all that mysterious. Wish it was. Wish it was all about woo, bumps and chills and no, no, no. That's why you find it all around. Presbyterians, Episcopal, Catholic, Towers. <coughs> what happened? They just got in tune with God. They began to find their assignment and began to move in the Spirit. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to, Jesus has opened it wide up. 
He basically said, there is no hindrance. I mean, that's, uh, no. he said, I'll, get, I'll throw you one for fun. Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus said, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest, to destroy the works of the wicked one. Right. You don't know what Jesus likes to do? He likes to destroy the works of the wicked one. <laughs> Anything that looks like the devil, he likes to say, no, I like that. You want to stir him up? See things that look demonic. And I'm not talking about, hey, how are you? How are we? <laughs> How many things that look like that's got the devil's fingerprints on it? Mm -hmm. That's got evil on it. Mm -hmm. ISIS. Right. Amen. ISIS. I mean, that's not hard to figure out. Yeah. You look at that, somebody cuts my head off. That, that ain't cool. No. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are. Right. That's mean. Yeah. That's wrong. That's evil. Yeah. And you, no, <laughs> that ain't Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, we, I'm not. I'm not smartest. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I can figure out what looks more like God than the other one. And, and I, that's why I'm, not, I'm pretty sure I just, they're going to get theirs. That's going to be over. Right? Because it can't live forever. Because Jesus is involved. Why? Because it says, I destroy the works of the living one. That's what I do. Oh! That's exciting. So wherever you see the fingerprints of the enemy, you can be pretty sure Jesus is with you. I just want that world now. But guess what? Not that mysterious. If it don't look like God, but not God. Hmm. All now, all you need to know is the way. It's the way. What's it say? His will and his way. It's not that hard to figure out the will of God. The hard thing is the way of God. We'll talk about that next week. It'll be more like love. Uh, we'll get there. Um, so, just for fun, yeah. what say we? I know this has been a little more than a day run around today, but you know, sometimes it's that way. Yeah. Okay. Just for fun, let's just invite the Holy Spirit, which would be the breath of God, the prophetic insight of God, the Holy Ghost, we ask you to come. Spirit of Jesus. You are the spirit of prophecy. That's in the Bible, y'all. I didn't even make that up. Woo! The spirit of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So Jesus, we ask you to come right now. Begin to brood over us. Holy Spirit, that's what you do. You just kind of hang out. You hang out over the earth. And then God said, let there be light. So we need a little light on our situation. Just stir us a little bit in our inner man so we can be pointed in the directions that will make us prosper. Make us find the will of God and enter into it in Jesus' name. All right, so, no praying. I find the devil and all that stuff. Here's what I want you to do. Just close your eyes. First song that comes to your mind. Don't even think about the first song that comes to your mind. All right, drop my look up. This is how mysterious it is. First song that came to your mind. Anybody want to tell me what song it was? Father in love with Jesus, amazing grace. Somewhere over the rainbow. Somewhere, <laughs> somewhere over the rainbow. Anybody else? Eight days a week. Hallelujah. You rescued me. Anybody get a second song? Wonder eyes and I miss you. Wonder eyes and I miss you. I like you. I love like that. Mine was Miss Lord. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Oh, my love. I okay, so just, just as simple as pie. I mean, just, we, you can prophesy. To yourself, right out of that song. Because that, remember, I said that's how badly God wants you to know it. I honestly believe if you just said, Jesus, you got to give me a song. Close my eyes and I'll kiss you tomorrow on the street. And I'll send all my loving to you. How nice is that? For Jesus. The Spirit of God to say, 
Close your eyes. I'm kissing you. And tomorrow I miss you. Because I know how it is during the day. You get busy. I get busy. But I send all my love to you. Now how precious is that? That's just precious. That the Spirit of God would say, I don't know what the rest of the words are. <laughs> See that? That's beautiful. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful. Anybody else got a song? What was your song? Will you ride? Will you ride? Will you ride? Will you ride with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great song. Most of our, most of our Christian songs that we know, not too hard to figure out what they're saying, is it? It really isn't. I mean, they are straight up, and and that's why the Bible calls them songs, hymns. That's most of our Christian songs are hymns. Uh, that that. By definition in the Greek. And spiritual songs. That's <laughs> random stuff. Just songs that just blow in. That's why we call them spiritual. Spirit is the breath and the wind. They just blow in. Spiritual songs. I like those. My, my Donna one time got to discussing this with God. She has time to quit. He got discuss, she got to discussing this whole song thing with God. And she said, uh, what's your favorite song, Jesus? He said, America the Beautiful. Wow. I love that. He said, I love that song. Something about it that moves me every time I hear it. Oh, beautiful. For spacious skies, for amber waves of green. The purple mountains majesty. Across the fruited plain. America, America. God shed his grace on thee. And crowned by good with brother from sea to shining sea. I expect he's singing that today and thinking, good God, I wish somebody had seen America to me. You know? I, 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 and I thought that was precious. She said, what's the saddest song you ever wrote? You want to hear it? This is awesome. What's the saddest song you think God ever wrote? Jesus said, you picked a fine time to leave me, Lucy. <laughs> he says, song breaks my heart. It goes like this. You picked a fine time to leave me, Lucy. Four hungry children and a crop in the field. I've seen some bad times. Been through some sad times, but this time I heard them on here. Pick a better time to leave, Lucy. And she said, why? He said, well, because Lucy, well, that's Lucy. He said, you pick a bad time to leave me. Didn't like him when you left heaven. Didn't like him when you did the whole thing. It was very sad. Because I had the four hungry children, four ends of the earth, had a crop in the field. Could have done some stuff. They said, that's that hurt in more heal. Because we can't get back to it. Can't get back to what we lost. And you think, oh, Jesus. I don't think I ever listen to the radio again. <laughs> and thank God's not in it, because he is. Now, does he bring on every song? Probably to somebody. Right. Yeah. You ain't got time to be trying to dissect every song. But open up the ears and let God talk to you. Because right. he will flat prophesy his purpose and his destiny for you and he'll use whatever he has to. And most of it he wrote himself. If you, if, I'm through. Yeah, I'm totally done. If you, if you talk to the people who write these songs, they'll tell you. It was just moving through the air, and I caught it. And that's how that song got born. All right. I'm done. Wow. Come on. Get that hand.